Hi, I'm Rebecca Ricks and I'm here with the Homeschool Connection and um, we're with our weekly show, The Brew. And The Brew is a mixture of people, events, or things that come together to form a more potent whole and we want to make your whole a whole lot better. So I'm here with my awesome new cup I got for Teacher Appreciation Week. Of course, everything tastes better in it in a new mug. Um, that goes with our theme. But today we're gonna talk about how to get your students to reach your potential. And I think to me as a high school student or a high school teacher, um, I would see this all the time in high school students. When you see a, a child that has so much potential and they're not reaching their potential, they're not fulfilling it. Um, they're not doing everything they can to become better. Um, you know, we tell kids all the time they can be anything they want to be, that the possibilities are super in, endless. And as teachers and parents, we definitely recognize um, our students' and children's strengths, and we see their potential. Um, but sometimes, unfortunately, they don't. They don't see the potential they can see. So I was actually talking to a parent about this today. Um, it's really hard too sometimes to make your, your fourth, fifth, and sixth graders reach their potential because you're right there in the middle. They don't have um, a goal, an attainable goal. So one of the things I think is most important is really give them um, an opportunity that they can be um, that they can be good at something, that they can have a talent that they can really achieve um, and reach it. And that goes for younger kids and older kids. Um, finding those hidden talents, finding something that they can be successful at. You know, we're not going to be good at everything. I mean, unfortunately, um, we're not all going to be awesome at everything. Sports may not be our thing. Um, everything might not be our main thing. So in order to help children reach their potential, help them find that one thing that is really phenomenal at. You know, and also when they do really good at something, praise them, rewards that's the main thing. And I think the, the most important thing it is, is for me that I think what I've noticed in kids is if you aim at nothing, you hit it every time. That's something my dad used to tell me. If you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. Um, a lot of times that's the main thing. They don't reach their potential, be, potential because they don't see the big picture. They don't have a goal or an aim or something to get to. So if we're talking about a younger child trying to reach their potential, you know they're not doing their best. Well, there's got to be something, a reason, something that motivates them to do it. You know, as adults, we become motivated to do different things. Um, why did I go to school or go to college? Because there's something I wanted to be. It's much harder to motivate a middle schooler than it is sometimes a high schooler. Because when you can go to a high school student or a student that knows what they want to do, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a nurse. Okay, well, here's what you have to do to be a nurse. Or what do you want to, um, or a younger kid, if they have a goal in mind, you can go to. But a lot of times, if they don't know what they want to be, if they don't have a big picture, if they don't know where they want to go, it's kind of like walking the blind leading their blind. So if they have a specific goal, we can help them get to that very specific goal in mind. Setting goals together, I think, is the number one thing to motivating people, um, students, um, in us and so making sure you do it together um you know if they're very goal orient oriented they're more likely to reach that goal um and a lot of times there can be stepping stones to reach that goal so i have a personal goal i, I would like to get my doctorate that's that's a personal goal but in order to do that there are certain things i have to do you know i had to get finish high school and then get a bachelor's and then get a master's and then go on and get a doctorate. So they're step by step by step. So maybe even if you're going with a student and you have a fourth, fifth or sixth grader, a younger student who's just not doing their best. Okay, well, here's a goal for you. What, what is it you want to do? You want to be a professional baseball player? Awesome. <laughs> Which we all know that not everyone's going to be a professional baseball player, but um, recently um, I did, um, oh, well, I went into a public school and I can't remember what the program's called where they have different business people come in and they sit with the public school students. It's kind of like that. We, we talk about careers and what they want to be. It's a, a whole program you do with them. And most of them, I had a lot of kids who wanted to be professional basketball players and professional actors and actresses 
and professional singers. And it was middle school, and so that's what they wanted to do. But you know what? Okay, great. Do you want to be a singer? Here's what you have to do. That takes a lot of practice. That's really hard. Have you been practicing lately? Oh, great. Did you know that a lot of singers, when you do that, you can go into college, you can go to college for that? A lot of times that people, and so talk to them. Always lead them down that career path. If they're, um, always take something, their passion, and lead it toward a career. Great, you wanna play professional basketball? That's awesome. Did you know that you usually have to play college basketball first? Really? Yeah, and you have to have really good grades to get into college to play college basketball. Oh, and so they don't, sometimes they don't know, they don't see these things that we want to. There can always be something that we can take that to motivate them and, and find that motivation for them. Um, you know, kids really do have the ability to reach things that seem out of, the ability to grasp things that seem out of reach, but they just need a little help. So um, having a goal for them helps motivating your student. Of course you can do rewards help motivate. Um, always positive reinforcement. Um, younger kids, who, who doesn't want a reward? Um, who doesn't want to see a small stepping stone? Who doesn't want to see that? But rewards are great. And you know what? Another thing that's really good in motivating is your own personal praise. Um, letting them know that you feel the worth in that. Even if they know that they're not the best at something. I'm a horrible speller. I will say it, said it before, I'll say it again. I cannot spell. I, um, and it's just hard for me. I, I would have a hard time. I hated spelling B, B days because I just knew I wouldn't be any good at it. So that's another thing. Um, praise the things that they're good at, but I happen to be good at math. So I was encouraged with that. So, um, you know, the, the praise sometimes knowing that, and you know, never, um, underestimate the praise from an outside source. If you know that there's someone that they, um, look up to, if you're homeschooled, maybe you have a Sunday school teacher or, um, a neighbor or another homeschool mom or someone that they, um, hang around that they might look up to or a pastor, talk up those things that they do well in front of them. Hey, you know, he's been having a hard time in spelling. He did a really good job on his spelling test this week. Um, always, you don't ever underestimate the power of praise. Um, always helps in motivating. And then, um, and be supportive of things that they want to do. Um, and another good thing to do is really help them with teaching them about being committed. Once you start something, we need to finish it. Help finish that, help reach that goals. I know a lot of times we all want to start a sport. Um, but halfway through the season, it's not nearly as fun, usually, as it seemed. And practice gets long and it gets hard. Um, but, you know, they finished that. They committed. Um, that will help them be motivated to do more things when they have that sense of commitment of finishing when they get done. So just remember, I guess that's kind of to sum up how to get kids to reach their full potential. Have a goal for them to reach. And how to get to that goal, make sure there's stepping stones, attainable things they can do that they feel motivated at each step um, as far as doing rewards or different things like that. You know, and always, I guess, the power of positive thinking too. Um, always push them. There's a fine line between how hard we push a child and how, um, how much they can do or actually capable of doing and um, their abilities. Usually we push that fine line between keeping in because we don't want them to get discouraged on that. Um, so hopefully this will help a little bit in how you're encouraging your student and students. Praise, um, being supportive, commitment, and most importantly, setting goals. So I guess that my last thought would be, again, the phrase my dad said, if you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. Have something that you're aiming for. Have something that's tangible that you can reach now. A big picture and a small picture that you can do. Because we know um, most anything can be accomplished if you set your mind to it. You can go on and do that. So just remember as you're working with your kids, and it can be discouraging and hard when you see someone that has all the potential in the world and doesn't isn't doing anything with their potential. Um, that can always be very, very discouraging. But um, make sure you can um, motivate them and drive them and see how they do it with those goals. Um, 
be more willing for them to reach their potential. You know, we can leave it a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Unless they can see the vision, unless they can see that, they can't do it. Um, one of my favorite verses in the Bible is, if, if there is no vision, the people perish. And that's how I kind of feel when we're not motivating children. Sometimes they don't see the vision. Um, so make sure that they have a vision to go for, something to aim for. Um, and then, you know, if you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. But along with that goes, um, decide what you want and pay the price to get it, is another thing my dad would always say. And what do you want to do? Do you want to be in the sports team? Well, you're going to have to pay the price. You're going to have to work out. You're going to have to try to run. You're going to have to do these things to get there. Um, or decide where you want to go. Oh, you want to be a nurse? Oh, well, that's here's where you're going to have to go to get there. It might take a while. It's going to do this, but this is where we need to go. So always have some sort of goal, some sort of path, some sort of way that there is and that there's an answer and a way you can do it to keep them motivated because, you know, it gets hard. School gets hard. School is hard for almost everyone. Um, it's hard for them. So hopefully that helps a little bit. And remember, um, you're not alone um, in your your homeschooling or your parenting or your teaching, you're not alone. And uh, we are hopefully here to help and support that with it. And if you have other great ideas of ways that you motivate your children or have done in the past that seem to work, please let us know. Um, give us a comment and we'll see you on Friday morning.